Hello, I'm Andy DeRoss, Superintendent of Schools in District 54. Uh, during the 2014-15 school year, I plan to introduce you to several outstanding teachers and students. Today I am joined by our math team in District 54. Um, I'd like to begin by introducing them. We have Director of Math and Science, Jim Vreeland, and our instructional math coaches, Gina Wirth, Amy Varchman, Megan Ankrum, Stephanie Christmas, and Don Chaika. In October, our math team will receive the Illinois State Board of Education Those Who Excel Award for their contributions in the district over the last several years with both staff and students. Uh, an example of that work is the achievement of our students in District 54. 21 of our 27 schools were in the top 5% of all schools nationally. And much of that credit goes to this team and their work. I'd like to be, be, begin by introducing to you their work and having you understand exactly what they do in District 54. Most people probably don't understand the role of our instructional coaches, so I'd like to ask uh, Gina Worth to describe an average day in the life of the math team. To be honest, our role as instructional math coaches varies day to day. We're scheduled to be in plan times with teachers, and during that time we're planning instruction for the upcoming week. We're looking at the standards closely. and. Um, finding out what is the intent of the standard, what is it we want our students to learn. Um, we also look at what strategies would be best to teach those given standards to help build that deep conceptual understanding. We take time to look at ideas for formative assessment. What are we going to do when our students don't understand the math, but also what do we do for those students that do understand the math. Uh, outside of that planning time, we also have opportunities to go into classrooms and work alongside teachers, which is always really exciting. We're super fortunate in this district that we have teachers who welcome us in their classrooms. So when we go in the classrooms, again, our role might vary based on the teacher needs. Sometimes we're observing teachers and providing them with feedback on either how the lesson went, on the student engagement or behavior management, whatever it is they're looking for at any given time. We might also work alongside that teacher and co-teach with them or model a lesson for them or even work with a small group of students. So that's always very rewarding for us. And then probably the other significant role we have as instructional math coaches is professional development. So on Wednesdays, we might share out professional development with an entire staff. And additionally, we um, offer professional development after school. It's probably one of the most rewarding times for us because these are teachers who choose to come on their own time after working all day to learn more and perfect their craft and help their students be successful. For me, at the end of a class, when two teachers are walking out, one a, a brand new teacher and one a 20 year veteran teacher, and they both say, wow, that was really meaningful. I have something I can then take back to my classroom tomorrow and use. Um, that always helps us realize that our impact, we are making an impact not just on teachers, but on students as well. And it just shows that as a district, we have lifelong learners who are really committed to helping our students be successful. So I would like to also then ask, what is the team currently working on? Well, Gina talked a little bit about the professional development, and I think that's one of the biggest projects that we're working on this year is offering grade level specific professional, professional development classes based on the GoMath chapters. So in each class, we basically front load the teachers with the information they need in order to plan and implement quality instruction. We look at the standards, we talk about strategies that can help the students become proficient with those standards, brainstorm ideas for numeracy, and we also talk about what proficiency looks like for those standards. On top of that, we talk about how to help develop students' understanding if they're not proficient, and then how to enhance it if they are already proficient. The other document is gonna be a numeracy resource, which will outline the mathematical progressions and help teachers plan for that very important 10 minutes of numeracy time that we have embedded in the balance framework every day. The math team is also gonna to continue to meet with the math task force this year so that we can reflect on our implementation of the learning standards as well as the new goal math curriculum and decide on what projects we need to go after in the future. Great, thanks Don. Hundreds of teachers attended professional development classes this summer, Stephanie, many of them on math. Um, why do you think District 54 teachers are so interested in improving their ability to teach math? Well, to start, most of us didn't learn the way that we're trying to currently engage our students with mathematics. So teachers are trying to take advantage of every single opportunity, such as the summer classes or, as the other ladies have mentioned, the professional development classes after school in order to explore and um, enhance their own relationship and understanding about math and they're getting excited about it. And part of the reason is because they saw last year firsthand that these new practices, they work. Kids are excited about math, 
they are understanding it at deeper levels than they have before and we know that math opens up a world of opportunities, especially when you're thinking about planning for college and career. And our District 54 teachers are super dedicated to making sure that they're working collaboratively in order to provide our students with the best opportunities and supports that they can. Okay, great. What do you attribute your success and more importantly, the success of your students? I did our teachers and their hard work for the success of our students. Um, I'm really honored to coach these teachers. They're really devoted to making math meaningful for the students every day. And the district structures really were a vital role, um, a big part of the game plan here. Uh, this year, for the first time, teachers really have time to focus and plan math collaboratively. Uh, and then we have the opportunity to help navigate them through the standards, to try out different strategies, and to plan lessons really that are focused on student learning. Um, the acceleration structure, um, implementing that this year, the teachers really can differentiate their instruction for their students and meet all their needs, um, whether they meet the standards or exceed them. And we really couldn't have met the levels of proficiency we did if it weren't for our teachers' hard work and planning, these awesome initial and guided and even acceleration lessons. Jim, how are the new Illinois learning standards changing the way we teach math? The standards themselves represent a, a shift for us at the district level. Prior to the Illinois learning standards coming into place, things spiraled year in and year out. So kids may have been learning different grade level content, but it was typically revolving around the same five themes that you saw within the standards. So number sense, measurement, algebra, geometry, and data analysis is really kind of the themes that we saw. And what we saw with the implementation of these standards is that we eliminated some content that wasn't necessarily appropriate for a kindergartner all the way through eighth grade and started looking at it as what is most critical for our kids to learn at that specific grade level. So if you think about kindergarten, we're working on counting and one-to-one -one correspondence and base 10 understanding. And in third and fourth grade, we're working on what multiplication might look like and transitioning into middle school, understanding equations and how that sets them up for high school. And really the design of the document is to help propel kids towards college and career readiness. So there's a content shift, but on the other end, there's also an expectation for how kids are supposed to engage with content. So we have eight practices that kids are supposed to be using on a regular basis to help enhance and understand that content. So what you're gonna see in a classroom setting is kids owning the, the learning. So a teacher might pose a problem and, you know, for instance, if Dawn was one of my students, she'll pose it one way, and if Gina was one of my students, she'll pose it another way, and so now it's an opportunity for us to talk about those different strategies. So it really is a nice comprehensive to create an opportunity for all of us collectively to learn together. One of the questions parents often ask is how they can support their students at home. Megan, can you offer any suggestions for parents who want to support their students in math? Absolutely. Um, I feel so privileged to work in a district where parents are so actively engaged with their child at home and academically. Our children are so successful in District 54 and I really think that's because parents spend time with them at home um, learning what they're doing in the classroom and bringing it to the home style. So um, if you go on our District 54 website we offer a variety of online resources that we recommend. If you're looking to build fluency and number sense we recommend Greg Tang and Extra Math. So extra math is just kind of that fluency, practice, repetition over and over again that the kids can work on. Um, the parents are able to track their progression as well. Greg Tang offers a variety of fun, engaging activities and games and riddles and brain exercises where the kids are thinking flexibly and using efficient strategies to answer those questions, but they're also engaged in math, which is really fun as well. Um, if you're looking for some videos, we recommend Khan Academy. That actually can show parents and students, their child, um, what does this look like in a math classroom? You know, you're learning these strategies and I'm not quite understanding. Can we watch this animation and watch it happening in real life? And um, Khan Academy offers those videos as long as assessment opportunities and rich challenges as well. Students um, can be monitored by their parents on Khan Academy. Um, finally, we talk about and we recommend MCTM, which is a website that takes you through illumination. So if parents are thinking, okay, they're bringing home these worksheets and their workbooks, and I like what they have here, but what about some game opportunities or an extension of what they're learning in the classroom? They can go onto that website. So beyond online resources, what can we do? One of the best things we can do with our kids is play board games. Um, 
and that not only builds a rich environment at home, but it also allows students to play um, math games such as Life, Yahtzee, Monopoly, Shoots and Ladders. They're having fun while they're building math skills, and they're also learning why we put them through math during <laughs> a school day. Why do we have to learn math is a common question, so it allows them to apply math in the real life. I'd like to thank the uh, math team today uh, for their time and also you know, them sharing their expertise. I'd like to also congratulate them. They're very worthy recipients of those who excel award. And um, I would like to also acknowledge their contributions to our staff and students. And they have been significant. And the gains that we've made would not have been possible without their work. So thank you to them. And thank you for your time today.